Jeffrey's about to ruin his relationship with Jessica. He's listened to all of the advice telling him to open up and be vulnerable in front of her and he thinks it's a good idea. Surely this many people couldn't be wrong and so Jeffrey does the unthinkable. He breaks down in front of her. Life's so hard and I'm so stressed and I just... Please look after me. You wanna know what happens? Jessica comforts him. They were right all along. All you've gotta do is be vulnerable and she'll actually like you even more. Yay, our relationship's gonna get better. What? Honey, where are you going? Coincidentally, Jessica just wants to go on a girl's night out now. The relationship diminishes and gets depolarized, boring, and dead. Adonis. Adonis is not a toxic man, but he will not burden his wife with his troubles. Now, of course, she is there to support him, but Adonis is a masculine man, and so he will solve those problems himself or with his brothers. His time with his woman is pure because he treats her more like his daughter rather than his mother. I did a meetup here in Dubai just a couple of days ago where me and a bunch of guys gathered around in a park to literally just fight each other. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. We literally just put gloves on and just fought each other. It's a great time. It's the second one we've done. It's called Fight Cult. It's every Saturday today in Dubai, you can find the details in like community posts, Instagram, whatever. But this time, you know, after the fighting's done, we all just kind of stand around. People ask me questions and take pictures. One of the guys asked me and he said, he thought I was wrong about the fact that I always tell you to not be vulnerable and show bad emotions to your woman. He said he thought I was wrong for this. And then he told me his story where he defied what I said. He opened up, became more vulnerable and the sexual attraction diminished. He started acting feminine. She started acting more masculine and their relationship ended. He was confused even to this moment even after having that experience asking me why this is happening and even now he couldn't truly believe that you shouldn't be vulnerable in front of a woman and you know what i said to him of course you don't believe me when i tell you to not show emotions bad emotions weakness to your woman because everyone else is disagreeing every movie all the news every dickhead on twitter all of your friends your family everyone is doing it wrong and they're telling you to do exactly like them they're telling you to treat your partner your wife your woman like your buddy like your male friend they're telling you to burden her with your troubles when she will consciously say that that's really nice you know wow they, wow she'll seem happy about it you want to know the true unfiltered facts of what will happen when you defy what i preach here and you listen to everyone else you'll open up in front of your girl and you'll feel awesome yay look at me i'm so forward yeah like we're so modern huh? you'll open up in front of your girlfriend you'll talk about some things you know some weaknesses you'll complain and she'll hold you and she'll be like oh you know and she'll look like she's happy that you've done this she will genuinely feel happy that you've opened up to her and get Guess what? She will start to fuck you less. And when you do fuck her, she'll enjoy it less. And when it gets extreme, she will think of another man fucking her because a feminine woman always needs a masculine man. When you act in a feminine way by opening up and crying and complaining and asking for her guidance, you discard your masculinity and you give her feminine energy from yourself. And when you give her feminine energy, that means that she has to give you masculine energy. You will literally begin to notice that she will be more masculine and dominating even when you guys are having sex. And then for the rest of the relationship, you will say something that usually is fine and she'll find it a little bit insulting and disrespectful. You'll ask her to do something and she'll make an excuse and not do it. For the first time ever, she will disobey you. No one talks about this because it's very closely tied with this thing of like, oh, you know, men's mental health, guys. We've got to take men's mental health seriously. Don't bottle up your emotions, guys. You know that I've been the biggest mental health advocate of the space for the last few years. I'm the biggest face of like men's mental health, men's self-improvement, right? I've told you how important it is. And I'm going to tell you something that's deeply controversial and I know for a fact, maybe you don't believe me just yet will explain that I'm right here. You should bottle up your emotions in front of women. Everyone else is disagreeing. When everyone agrees on some narrative, it usually means that that narrative's fucking bullshit. So hear me out. Because right now in your mind, all of the conditioning, even though you don't realize it, but you've been brainwashed and conditioned by, you know, the media and all this shit, right? So let me present my arguments and then you can come to a conclusion yourself, right? Everyone's saying, don't bottle them up. Show every emotion to a woman possible. I'm saying bottle them up in front of women. You know what my argument is? Unbottle those emotions and show them to your male best friend. The guy who's so fucking close. I'm not talking about some dickhead friend you've got who slaps you at the back of the head and makes fun of you or something. I'm talking about a close male friend that you can literally open up to. Mine sat right here, bro. I'm literally recording videos. He just sat there reading. What's up, bro? Um, you need a friend like this. And maybe you don't have one just yet, but you can develop that. This is the kind of person that you can open up to. This is the person that you can literally break down in front of. If a family member of mine died, I wouldn't cry in front of my girlfriend. I'd cry in front of Sam. If I was going through some intense problem, even recently, honestly, like I needed to book a doctor's appointment for something which is like 
some kind of sickness that I've got. I won't go into detail, right? I told Sam about it and not my girl. And you might say, oh, well, this is toxic, but hear me out. The reason why is because this is like my brother in arms who's gonna help me overcome this, who can help me overcome these problems. My girl really can't. If I have a problem of stress of like, oh yeah, you know, I'm leading a movement of a million people and it's really stressful. All she can do is like, oh, yo, come here. I tell Sam, it's like, okay, let's think of some solutions. Straight away, you probably agree, like telling the male friend that you have who's similar to you, it's probably gonna be more practical and useful than telling like your feminine girl, right? If your girl's really masculine and you're feminine, then of course, like, yeah, fair enough, you can like open up to her. If she's like way more work and career driven than you are, and you're like the little bitch who thinks about her while she's thinking about work, fair enough. But usually those kinds of relationships end in resentment. The reason why not to show vulnerability to your girlfriend is because if she is a feminine woman, which you probably do want a woman to be feminine and submissive rather than her to dominate you, you want her to be submissive to you. That means that if she is full of feminine energy, she can only be totally attracted to and in love with a man who displays perfect masculine energy. When you show weakness and emotions and you cry and stuff, you're showing to her that you are not that perfect masculine man, which is fine for a little bit. Like it can happen. Sometimes you can complain without realizing. Sometimes you can just cry a little bit because some bad shit's happened, that's fine. But if you start to do this consistently, if you start to act like a little bitch and you bury your head in her breast and ask her like, oh, you know, she's, oh, she's wiping away the tears and this happens often, she will lose respect for you. This is seen as evil advice, but it's the true advice. The evil advice is the one telling you to ruin your relationship. Right now, you may disagree. Go and ask any guy who's actually done this and he'll tell you the exact same thing. Consciously and in the real world, she was so nice and so happy that she opened up and slowly and surely, within a month, two months, their relationship ended. Conveniently, just coincidentally, maximum two months for every guy who ever opens up to his girlfriend. About two months later, either the relationship ends or she's cheating on the side. This is not to tell you to never speak about your problems. Again, because people will say, oh, he's telling people to bottle up and that leads to suicide. No, no, no. This is not to tell you to bottle up your emotions. This is telling you to choose a different person to be emotional in front of. Because there is a person you can do which will actually be useful and that is a male friend. But to your woman, as much as she says that she'd love for you to open up, she truthfully, subconsciously doesn't want to hear your problems. Why? Because she believes that you are that man. If she's in love with you and she's allowing you to fuck her or, you know, soon to be there, if she's in love with you, she has this perception of you that you are that guy, that you are the guy that can solve any challenge, no problem, that you will get it done, that you will bear the stress on your shoulders. She thinks of you highly. Why would you ruin that? Why would you show her? Oh, by the way, you know this image that you had of me where I was like Superman and I could do all these things? I'm struggling, baby. I'm really struggling. I'm really sad. It's really hard. Life's really hard. It seems evil to say this. It really seems wrong to say this, but relationships, you probably agree, was, were a lot better and longer lasting a hundred years ago. Do you think that old school 1900s man were in the top at? Do you think he was coming home like, oh, it's really hard. Oh, like, oh. Or was he a man with a fucking strong hand grip, four digit testosterone, 1000 nanograms per deciliter? And if he did have some problems, he'd probably tell his fellow man, your woman is not your therapist. Say that with me. My woman is not my therapist. You don't come to her with your problems. You come to her with your accomplishments, with your happiness, with your gift of masculine direction. You make her feel like a little girl around you. Because remember what I said before, there's a dynamic that you may not have heard before. And a lot of like dickheads hear this and they're like, oh, incest. No, no, no. There is two dynamics that you can have in a relationship. It's either the father daughter dynamic where you are the leader, she is submissive, or it's the son mother dynamic where she's the leader and you are submissive. She's masculine, dominant, you're feminine, submissive. Which one do you want to be? The majority of men who have got good enough mental health, they don't want to be with a woman who dominates them. They want to be the dominator. They want to be the masculine person. That means that you need to be in the father-daughter dynamic. And yeah, oh, oh sex, just shut the fuck up. Incels, just shut the fuck up. It's just an analogy to help, right? Would the perfect father burden his little girl with stress? Should a father come home and tell his little girl like, oh, you know, we're really broke. Oh, I need to get another job. No, of course not. In front of your little girl, you are Superman. You're going through some shit at work. You come home with a massive smile on your face. You pick your girl up and like twist around the room and everything. You don't push the stress of your work, of your life, of your challenges, of your masculine endeavors onto this little girl. And when that girl gets a little bit bigger, things shouldn't change. You can disagree with this advice if you want. And when it comes up for you to be vulnerable, if you really want to, do it. Being vulnerable to your male friend is fine, but let's say vulnerable to your wife or to your girlfriend, right? If you don't believe me, do it. And keep this video in mind. Keep my message in mind. And I guarantee as soon as you show vulnerability, you will see some really nice level of like connection and she's being really nice. And then just keep in mind what I said. Just see how she behaves towards you going forward. The first things will be very subtle. You'd probably be able to miss them unless you were really focused and thinking, hmm, she usually used to do that thing and she's not done it. Oh yeah, it's probably nothing. Oh baby, can you do the thing? Oh, she hasn't done it. Oh, hmm, okay. Hamza did say this, but no, no, Hamza's wrong. Hamza's wrong. That was that toxic masculine guy. Oh, oh, oh. oh we, we've not had sex yesterday. Oh, and then you try and escalate. You're kissing her and she pushes you away a bit because she's tired and it's the first time that she's been too tired to have sex with you. Oh, but you know, but you know, 
know, like, oh, I can't push it onto her. A little bit more secretive with her phone. Who's she calling out there? Why is she putting her phone face down? Hmm. You can say this is toxic. This is reality. I think the toxic thing is to spread your stress to someone who doesn't really want it. What you need is stoicism. You need emotional control. You need to improve your mental health. So many guys are living with such shit mental health. And this is how this whole issue arises. They've got shit mental health and they want to break down in front of their girls. And you'll want to know how I know about this because I was like this. In 2020, two years ago, through COVID, I was living with my girl at the time, like, you know, the girl I was dating. I'd been with her for three years. And when I tell you, this isn't an exaggeration, right? When I tell you that she saw me as like the ultimate alpha male for years, like fully, she was mine, right? I can give you some examples just so you know, right? She's down to meet me whenever. She helped me start my first business, which was like selling clothes on eBay. I'd be working a job and she would do all of it. It'd be a sale, boom, I send her a screenshot. She packages the piece of clothing and the packages, right? The post-it, you know, the post address, takes it to the post office, pays with her money. I don't even pay her back and sends me the receipt and everything. I had a submissive girl, right? The girl who's totally in my frame, who saw me as the alpha, guess what? I listened to this advice three years later, you know, mental health went bad, COVID times and stuff, right? And I broke down in front of her. I cried, oh, it was really hard. For the first time ever, her sexual attraction in me diminished. So I know what I'm speaking about firsthand because when you see a woman who totally adored you, when you see a woman who was totally submissive towards you, not be like that anymore. That's a soul crushing experience as a man, but it's a fantastic learning lesson. It happened because I slacked in my duty to be a masculine stoic man and I take responsibility. She wasn't the bad person in this. She was the same all throughout. It was that I changed. She saw of me as this perfect guy, this top tier strong man. And I crumbled in front of her with little tears and like little bits of snot coming out of my nose. Is that what you want, bro? You want your girl, the girl who sees you so highly, you want her to look at you while you're crying like a little boy and you got little snotty fucking goo coming out of your nose. Is that a good look? <laughs> this advice that you keep hearing, men should show their emotions to their women. Uh, it leads to more relationships breaking down than it does to strengthen them. And when a relationship breaks down, that is what leads to men's mental health problems. That's what leads to men's suicide. The most common reason for men killing themselves is relationship problems. Soon it's going to change over to like financial problems, but relationship problems are still a leading cause. The relationship problems only happen when you don't act masculine and she doesn't act feminine. That's it. Literally, it's simple as that. Relationship problems come when you don't act masculine and she doesn't act feminine. When you fuck up and start being vulnerable, emotional, start crying and become feminine, she has to become masculine. Then the relationship just feels kind of disgusting. You feel weird around this girl who's more dominating than you are. She's more work focused than you are. She's focused on her studies whilst you're texting her thinking, when is she going to reply? That's not a good feeling. I seem like an evil bastard in this video, don't I? I seem so evil. I seem like I'm spreading some kind of knowledge that is going to make men suffer. And yet this video is going to save men from killing themselves. This video is going to save relationships. To control your emotions in front of a woman, you need to have at least decent mental health. Go watch my full mental health guide right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.